This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And I have a question I've been dying to ask Taylor because we talk every Monday and he is my 10-year Wall Street vet. How you doing, buddy? Let's do this. I'm excited. Thanks for having me, Michael. Yeah, so I have a question that you're the only guy in my series of experts that I talk to weekly that really has a hope of, of answering this question. So uh, I appreciate you. Uh, ready? Yeah, let's do it. Fire away. What do we got? So, so in video number one, I gave you your props or your roses so that you could uh, you take your victory lap about CPI. You know, seven. You called. You said it, it's going to be in the sevens, and you were right. You were wrong three times in a row. But hey, you know, the blind squirrel. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like a batter, you know, batting 300. I'm in yeah. the Hall of Fame. Yeah, in your Hall of Fame. That's actually not bad. That's true. Um, but I actually wanted to ask about what happened after, right? So CPI, I think, comes out at 530 Pacific, 830 Eastern. The market opens an hour later. And obviously, that day was just a blow-off round. Euphoric, right? yeah. Euphoric. And uh, so a lot of people were like, you know, risk on, uh, into the bear market. And I, I was looking at this going, I think it's simpler than that. And I don't know if there's any data or flow or whatever that you have access to that I can never pretend to understand that I just think Wall Street, retail, were so negative because, again, CPI had surprised the upside or negative three times in a row and people were set up for that again. So, you know, Wall Street sometimes goes that way. Well, the trend is that way. The trend is your friend. Just keep betting that way until you're not. And this one came out. Not only was it, you know, in the sevens, but it was it wasn't seven nine. It was seven seven. And I think what happened is just the short covering rally of all time. And I don't know if there's any data to support that or not. You can see it a little bit. So I'll say kind of yes and no. I'll talk out of both seven mouth, but. Yeah, I think that you can see it in volume, in volume, trading volume. So on any day, you can get an idea of how many shares were traded for the S&P 500 or for the NASDAQ or for whatever underlying indice that you want. Trading volume was heavy that day. And, okay. and you can say that that's you know, just more retail buyers pummeling into the market because they finally feel some comfort. I think it probably was a short covering that you're getting at there. And that's uh, more systematic because it was yeah, immediate. That was the, machine. the volume came bang. And people yeah. in retail don't move markets that quickly. No. Um, they think they don't about move it together. The yeah, yeah, they don't. No. Move. They have a job or a family. <laughs> it really felt it to me, right? It really did feel like the open people started to get out of positions, and then it just fed on itself. And the machines just have these rules, like you get to this number, and it, they just start. It's it was wild to watch. So I I I think it was just Wall Street and the machines positioned on the wrong side, and. It was. And so, so as they bet stocks to go down, not only can they buy, not only are they forced to buy them back to cover the short, but then they might even go long as well. So that's a double buy, if you will. So you buy back to get your short position to flat to neutral. So no exposure. And then if you want to expose yourself to the market, then you have to buy long. If you so want to ride this new wave, right. You got to buy twice. Correct. Correct. Which is, is how you can see those magnificent, magnificent moves off the bottom. And, and again, we talked about this on the video earlier. You, the, the biggest moves every single time throughout history happen from bottoming points and not, not, and that's not to say that that is the ultimate bottom, no, but they come from bottom. downward trends. That's <laughs> yeah. a, a bottom. Exactly right. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, so we talked about it. I'll, I'll just mention it again, cause it makes sense. The last 50 years, there have been three years that had uh, four years that had every one of the top 10 trading days, 2008, one of the worst years of all time, 2009, the end of that 2020 and COVID. And then all the way back in 1987, two days after black Monday, when the market plummeted 23% in one day. Uh, the other thing I want to highlight there is the market can no longer go down 23% in one day. Correct. Yep. We right. have a uh, regulation tweet stop. Everything shuts down for a little bit. We settle, we reopen. Yeah. And uh, I believe, so those are called breakers. What are they called? Yeah. Circuit breakers. They call me, I would be able to tell you. Yeah. It, I mean, for circuit all intents breakers. and purposes, if it's not that it is that. Yeah. So basically the circuit breakers. And I think if the market ever goes down 10%, it shuts down for the day. I want, yeah. So there's, I, I, I should have thought to look at this before, but I think it stops okay. at seven. I think we take yeah. a breather at seven and yep. then for like an hour or whatever. Yeah, yep. exactly. Right. And it, it is a good mechanism. Like you can say like, Hey, then people can't get their money out of the market. 
maybe that's a fair argument too, but that thing can just continue to gap down. Oh, and that's, no. that's bad. And we did. We had circuit breakers kick in during the COVID. Um, COVID. Yep, and again, what happens, because again, like we just talked about short covering ra- rally, doubling buys. If it goes negative, the machines can kick in and it, they could just feed on themselves and just take oh, yeah. this thing through the floor. So I think circuit breakers are a great idea. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm probably stating what most people already understand, but when he's talking about machine trading, it says, uh, let's use this example. Like if Microsoft gets to a hundred dollars on the, on the dot, uh, my machine then begins to trade it. And all of a sudden it trades it from 100 to 101. And the next machine's got a $101 level and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It just keeps going and banging into other dominoes, spilling the other dominoes down and it can erupt higher. And that's a lot of what Michael's talking about, the short covering rally that we saw last Thursday. But on the other side, when it's going down, people get the hell out of the way too. And they say, I'm going to sell if it hits $95 and then it hits $94. And it's like, and I'm not, it's not all round dollars. That was just the example. Nah, just the example. But bang, yeah. bang, 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 bang. The domino can move it down. That's why we have those circuit, break, circuit breakers in line. Yeah. And really what the point is here is we won't have another 23% down. Black Monday, at least the, no. on a percentage basis, will never happen again. Uh, however, numerically, we have exceeded that a couple of times, right? N- number wise. Like we uh, not, I don't follow. I think, I think I think Black Monday was down 887 points. Oh, gotcha, 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 yeah, gotcha. But we yeah, had but days. From a percentage, yeah, percent. I, you know, I like my dad is always calling me like, "Hey, what was the market up today? 800 points?" And I'm like, "I have no idea. I don't, I don't deal in points because it doesn't mean anything." It's a percentage, like, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll give yeah. you a percentage. Like it was up 2.4 percent, whatever it is. And he's like, you know, at one point in his life, 100 points was like an astronomical move. And I'm like, 100 points happens literally every single day now. Every day it happens. Dude, it might happen in five minutes. (laughs) Right, exactly. He's like, 100 points? I'm like, yeah, since we were on the phone, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) We've been talking for seven minutes. It's down 87 points. What do you want? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of an interesting sidebar. But, yeah, I I always look at things. And, yeah, like the Dow's up 122 right now. It's 0.36%. It's nothing. It's nothing, yeah. So – the other thing I want to talk about kind of rolling in here is um, I think I think the Dow was up like like eight or nine percent S&P Nasdaq all up more than five percent last week. The yep. Fed cannot be happy about that. No, no. So I, I will realign your numbers a little bit there. So the biggest upshot was taken by the Nasdaq, followed by the S&P, followed by the Dow. Oh, now the that's, reverse. OK, that's the reverse of the year. So the year is the Dow is by far a leader. Right. then the S&P, then the NASDAQ. But Thank what you. happens when you get a big reversal, most times stuff that's gotten crushed the most pops the most. And it's right. not to say that that trend continues, but in short order, the most beaten down stuff has the biggest magnitude jump on the other end. But yeah. sorry. Do you just- have the no, no, I love you the correction. Do you have do you have the rough percentages? Because last week was, or actually the last three days were pretty good. What were the totals? Do you remember? Um, yeah. So, uh, it, so I, I know about the one day numbers on Thursday. I think the NASDAQ was up 720 right in that ballpark. The S and P was up five and a half and the Dow was up just under 4%. And then the follow through the following day was they were all inside of a percent. So I call it all in. You're probably at eight to eight and a half percent on the NASDAQ, probably six, six and a half percent on the S and P and the Dow is probably up 5% somewhere like that. And then the other thing that happened, we should we should just close out with this, is the dollar cracked and the 10-year treasury. I've never seen a move like that in the 10-year treasury. I was trying to do a little research to find out if there was ever that big of a movement in a day. And I suspect, because there was like a 30 basis point movement in the 10-year treasury, which is massive. I suspect 33, 33 basis on- 33 basis points, that what it was? Yeah. I suspect that it probably did happen. But the percentage was much different. So if you think back when yeah, you know the ten year was, 18, was yeah. higher, exactly, it could have come down thirty basis points, and that's like you know to to the point Nothing. we just made about my father, hundred points, like oh my god, hundred yeah. points. You know, it's yeah. just a different effect at that point. Um, boy, lost my train of thought. Keep me. Bond, yeah, basically, we're doing a percentage. Oh, point the dollar. Move. The dollar was yeah. the other yeah. the other piece yeah, the of dollars. it. Yeah, everything. So there is one thing that has a positive correlation with the dollar. So essentially what I mean by that is when the dollar is going up, there is only one thing in the assets within the United States that is going up simultaneously. And that is generally the long treasury bond. And that even hasn't worked this year. But historically, as the dollar goes up, it weakens almost 
every single financial asset, generally long treasuries, it's a positive for because generally the dollar is going to rally and that's going to cause, again, S&P 500 earnings to go down. And again, uh, you know, the dollar is the ultimate arbiter of asset values. If you had to point at one thing, that's a pretty damn good thing to point at. And that finally did crack after a euphoric, euphoric 16, 17% run year to date, which is unbelievably astounding when it comes to currencies. So I guess we'll close out with this final question. And again, this is a crystal ball. Yours is as broken as mine. Do you think we've seen peak 10-year treasuries for the year? Again, we only have six weeks left. Do you think we've seen, seen peak 10-year treasury for this year? Six weeks. Yes. I, I, so I see three, and I can, uh, I'll do this very quickly. I see three potential economic market condition possibilities going forward. Here's okay. the three. One is inflation has not peaked. And that Ooh. market condition is going to look a lot like it has this year. So that think about be, what we've that experienced. Would be bad. Just, ex just think about that continuing to experience. The second one is inflation has peaked and we avoid a recession. That is this, that is the boom market. That's the boom market. That is where you want to be risk on because this thing's going to run because right now we have priced in probably a recession. Right. The third, which I think is the most likely is inflation has peaked, but recession's coming. So we're going to get that uptick in employment. You're going to see an earnings downtick. And you're going to see that be a real bouncy bottoming process that takes time before we finally get that official bottom and start to work out of the other side. And so I think that I expect going forward the next year to continue to be very choppy. Could it be 10% higher? Yes. Could it be 10% lower? Absolutely. But I think you're going to get a lot of this lot sideways of that, action. Yeah. If we're it'll right. just be, it'll just chew you up. Right. It'll yep. Chew you up. Yep. So, so, so uh, to know that dollar cost average, like we talked about there, yeah. break up that money into yeah. however many different chunks you feel comfortable with. Just because I like to have fun. I'm going to take your three, three scenarios. You can copy me, but you don't have to. I understand. So your first scenario is we haven't seen peak inflation. So on a percentage basis, I'm going to give that a 10% chance. My, my opinion only, not yours. Uh, number two, we have what's called the soft landing. Peak, inf uh, peak inflation is over. We have a soft landing, no declared recession. 10%. So I was going to say, I know you hate that one. You're, that's not, I hate, that, that's I hate not that on your one. radar. <laughs> that's not on my radar. So 80% so your third option. Uh, we're going to get what the, I think the Fed is trying to engineer uh, uh, a. Uh, I think they're trying to engineer a shallow but long recession. I think that it's going to be three, four quarters. So 10, 10, 80, you don't have to copy, but if you want to play along. Let's I go. think both of the initials are more likely than what you think they are. So okay. I'm going to say 20, 20, 60. We agree, okay. very directionally agree on that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, I, I don't think you can necessarily go guns ablaze and then inflation's over right now. Just oh, from 70s, yeah. 70s as the indicator, you know, not saying we're repeating the 70s, but just that is the warning that, hey, you can't uh, so, necessarily uh, think that. So let's just end on this because this is, this, is, this is the number one question that I'm trying to answer every day. So let's just call inflation 8% because the math is easier. Yep. I think there's a portion of that that is easy to beat, reverse, whatever you want to call I think there's a portion of that that's hard and hard means quarters, right? Easy as months, hard as quarters, structural, very, very hard as years. I don't know what percentage of this 8% is easy, hard, and very hard. That's the riddle. I think that that, I, I, I thought that was where you're going. I thought you were going to tell me what you thought your percentage. Oh, I'll were. tell you. Yeah. I mean, I, I will, but I wanted to check the logic because I think that's, oh, wait, it's that, not I, all easy. It's not all easy. No, it's not. No, it's not it's easy not at all. Hard. Yeah. We're, 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 we're proving that goods are easy. Goods, yeah, exactly. ta tangible, uh, you know, bicycle. Well, I don't know why that's my example. Bicycles are Close. easy. Close. Yep. Right. Close. Whatever. Yeah. Supply chain so, is correct. At this point, that's come in. Yeah. So I'll give you the, I'll give you some numbers. And again, these are just round numbers because it, it doesn't, it, it, being precise is an idiot's game. So right. on 8%, I think 2% of it's easy. So we can get from eight to six. And again, easy for me is months. Six, and then next, hard is six to four. And hard is quarters. And that leaves 4% that's structural. That is yep. years. 
that is and, kind of where I'm at today. And that's your your housing, that's your rent, your, wages. I was gonna say housing, labor. I, I would imagine are the two things that you're yeah, gonna point out. Of there. course. Yeah. 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 I I think labor comes off before housing does. Um the market's tight, but I think it's starting to loosen. I think that the jobs number that's outstanding right now, the jolts information that's at 10 million or whatever it is, I think it's half that. I think it's people really? that have outstanding jobs out there that- Looking for like the ideal, perfect person. Yeah, yeah it's just not going to happen. So, and, and there's no point to take them down. Why would they ever take them down? If the ideal person comes and they want to work at you that rate, them. why not leave it? Yeah. yeah so um, I, I think that the labor part's rolling, um, but but you know better than I do that the housing is tough. Stuff, yeah. So again, yeah, th this just tells me the, f again, where did this, like that two, two, four, what does that translate next? Rates are going to be stay higher longer. We're going to be on this plateau all of 2023, no rate cut next year. Just we're going to, I hope we get to terminal rate. I'm calling terminal rate still 5%. I think one thing did happen after CPI reading of seven, seven is we're now taking 6% terminal rate off the table, right? Yeah. There are some people talking six and 10 mortgage rates. I'm like, that's gone. Now it's, you know, I'm going to still call five. Well, right before that was Powell's meeting where we said we had to eventually end up at a higher rate. So that's what drove him up. I mean, this is such, such a whipsaw game that we're playing right now. Yeah, That's why we're going to talk. That's why we talk every week. Thank you for helping me understand what's going on. Taylor, where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments on Instagram. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yep. yep.